From Washington, D.C., this is Middle East Focus. Greetings to all our listeners. My name is Lynn Snej, and I'm the director of the Arts and Culture Center at the Middle East Institute. Um, today's podcast is one of the several programs coming out of our current exhibition, More Than Your Eyes Can See, Contemporary Photography from the Arab World, that opened on June 3rd and will be up through October 21st, 2022, at the Middle East Institute Art Gallery in Washington, D.C. Our current exhibition is in partnership with Tribe, a publication and a platform focused on documenting photography, video, and new media from the Arab world. As a global platform, Tribe's core mission is to create an archive and stimulate dialogue about the artists, emerging and established, who are defining their practice. It's a great initiative. You can learn more about them and check their website on www.tribephotomagazine.com. The exhibition is curated by independent curator, researcher, and exhibition producer Leila Abdelhadi Jadalla and features the work of 15 photographers from the Arab world and its diaspora who are defining the practice of photography in the Middle East. Employing photojournalism and fine art photography, their diverse work exploring notions of place, identity, the body, the environment, youth culture, politics, and more provide an intimate and dynamic lens through which to see the Arab world. Countries represented in the exhibition are Algeria, Egypt, Iran, Jordan, Morocco, Oman, Palestine, Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. For those who have not yet had the chance to see the show, it is up, as I said, throughout the summer and until October 21st. So if you are in D.C., come see the exhibition. Our gallery is open Mondays to Fridays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is a beautiful show and a testament to the incredible talent of photographers from the Middle East. You can make an appointment on our site, www.mei.edu Arts and Culture, or just walk in. The exhibition is also available to view online, although nothing beats seeing it in person. Turning back to our segment today, I, I am joined by two of our participating artists in the exhibition, Iman Ali from Oman and uh, Samar Hasboun from Palestine. Their work is shown side by side in our gallery, and I'm honored to host them today and bring them in conversation to speak about their work, their aspirations, and the themes that drive their vision. Iman and Samar, welcome to our podcast. Uh, it is such a pleasure to be in conversation with you. I want to introduce you briefly before we get right into our conversation. Iman Ali is an Omani Bahraini visual artist based between London and Oman. Uh, Ali's work interlaces gender, religious and sociopolitical ideologies under the umbrella of sexuality and the performance of gender. Ali questions these cultural complexities by exploring its manifestations in the Arab world. She explores these themes through a wide range of mediums, from image making to text, light installation, and sound. She has a single image winner. She was a single image winner at the British Journal of Photography 2020 Female in Focus Awards. Her full biography is on our website. Samar Hasboun is a Palestinian photographer. She worked as a Middle East photo editor for AFP for over four years before embarking on a freelance career working for organizations such as UN Women, UNFPA, and many others. She's been published by the New York Times, Al Jazeera, The Intercept, and Al Pais, amongst others. And Samar was awarded grants by the Magnum Foundation, um, AFAQ, the Arab Fund for Arts and Culture, and the Prince Klaus Fund. Her full bio is also on our site. Welcome to you both. It is a pleasure to host you both today. Your artwork, both of you, as I mentioned, is displayed side by side in our gallery and in your pieces that speak to gender issues, body politics, and the harsh reality of discrimination. There is yet um, so much grace and beauty. I want to turn first to you, Iman. Welcome to our podcast. 
I want to ask you to tell us more about the two works that are in the show and also the series that they are coming out of, Self-Portrait. Um, maybe you can describe a little bit the two works for our listeners as you speak and unpack them. And the series um, also, maybe talk about the series more broadly. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this podcast. It's a real pleasure to, to share um, the space with you all. So the work that I have exhibited, two works for my Self-Portrait uh, series, which is an ongoing series that I began Oh, I don't even know when. It seems like I've been doing this forever, really. But essentially, um, it's a body of work that, I, um, that I'm working on as a way to reclaim my own narrative and presence as an Arab woman. And a lot of the work is shot uh, in Oman or you know, elsewhere in the, in the GCC. And essentially, the approach is actually quite playful in the sense that the inspiration really comes from everywhere. It could be um, a side of the building that I'm inspired by or a story that's, um, you know, part of the local culture or something somebody says that might spark an idea for something um, that I would like to to photograph. And, and the work is very much rooted in my love for cinema um, and my love for narrative and storytelling. And so each one could be seen as a film still where there's a story that's being suggested. And I'm very much um, creating a world in which I play a character. So um, there is a, a dialogue um, with architecture, film, performance and narrative with, uh, and literature um, within the work. Absolutely, uh, Iman. What you're saying is, is, I mean, you're in a sense describing the layers of the photos that are, you know, part of the exhibition, very theatrical, where, uh, you know, I'm going to prompt you to speak a little bit about the fact that you also are both the protagonist and the director in your photos. And in that, is it true for the entire series? Can you speak about that as well? Yeah. So when I started this body of work and it had, you know, it has gone through many different sort of transformations. When I first started photographing myself, the work looked very different. And this was about, I don't know, 12 years ago, let's say. And, um, you know, through experimentation and, um, you know, just sort of constantly shooting and trying out new ideas, um, I, you know, eventually developed my own visual language and really actually not a lot of people know this, but they did start out as love letters that I would send, um, to a former partner as a way to keep in touch, express myself visually, because I feel like that is how I can communicate best. And through that, my visual language, um, had, had developed. Um, so lots of experimentation, um, but going back to the work, works that, that are being shown in the exhibition, um, you know, the main reason why I photograph myself and I perform in front of the camera as well is because when I first started out, it was actually very difficult to find people to photograph and more specifically women. I was rejected many times by many people because they didn't really understand why I would want to photograph them to begin with. You know, now it's very different, you know, with, with social media and, and everything being a lot more globalized and people being more open. It's very different. In fact, you know, the culture has changed so much that people are taking photographs of themselves and performing in front of the cameras themselves, essentially. Um, but uh, when I first started, that wasn't the case. So photographing myself and directing myself was a means of making things happen when I wanted to. So it was convenient. I was there 24 hours a day available, you know, and, and that's pretty much how it started. So if I had an idea that I wanted to explore or a mood that I wanted to create or a story that I wanted to suggest, I was always there to make it happen. And that just made, um, bringing my ideas to life a lot more quicker. Um, and I've just stuck with that, you know, whenever, um, wherever I am in the world, um, if there's, you know, something that sparks my interest and in in an idea needs to be expressed, um, I just do it through using uh, my own body in front of the lens. Absolutely. So there is a, I mean, you know, there is when you look at the at the work, there is a lot of, as you say, you know, a lot of cinematographic 
um, a mood and, you know, there's a lot of grace, but there's also a lot of power and strength. So as you started in this self sort of portrait series, would you say that it was first, you know, deciding to do that, you know, fine, I can't find any any takers, any characters, so I'll just do it myself. Was it like an act of defiance then then turned into resistance and then self-exploration? Or, you know, do you feel like you've gone also, your reasons to, this, to do this have also evolved with the project? Absolutely. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I started... Um, I started in one way and I ended up in another and that only had come with, you know, that transformation and evolution of the work came with time, came with growing, growing up, you know, me as a woman changing. And so the work in itself has evolved and changed with time. And it has gone through so many sort of iterations, exploring different things because, you know, we're complex human beings and, um, I photograph myself at, uh, at different times, you know, so I might be feeling a certain way one day and then completely different another day. And I think that that somehow, you know, I subconsciously channeled that through the work. So there are some works that, you know, may be described as powerful, but, but at the same time, there is that, there is that quite vulnerability to it as well. You know, there's a curiosity and sometimes there's, it's the complete opposite where, you, you know, there's a reassertion of, of myself, there's a confidence in the work, you know? So it really depends on kind of how I'm feeling that particular day and what I want to communicate through the work. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very personal piece of work. And I, I want to speak to you uh, about your broader work and practice, of course, but I want to first um, go to Samar. Samar, welcome to our podcast. You are showing uh, in our exhibition four works from a um, very moving series titled Aaron Duff's, a project you started in 2020 that I believe was also featured in the Washington Post. Can you speak about the genesis of the project and the works that are in the show? Maybe you can also speak a little bit about the title of the series. So thank you for having me. So Aaron Duff's, I started working on it um, during the pandemic, actually. Um, but the idea essentially was, was there somehow. Um, I always wanted to do a project about uh, the queer community in Palestine. And um, I never found the right angle because I didn't want it to be too exotic and I didn't want it to be you know, taken advantage of by mainstream media. And I also was thinking, okay, it's, it's you know, it's difficult to talk about them, but I don't want to talk about them in a way like, oh, wow, there's, you know, LGBTQ community in Palestine. So I really wanted to start from somewhere where there's common ground or, or mutual ground for them and other people. And when the pandemic hit, I think it kind of <laughs> set the record straight, if you want, you know, because everybody was going through the same thing. Um, and so it was the perfect opportunity to to talk about what this community was going through during the pandemic. And so that's how the concept or the idea of Errant Doves uh, came about. The title, I borrowed it from a poem by Ocean Vong, where he talks about a couple, uh, a gay couple who were attacked as they were uh, in their apartment um, by a, like a, like a Molotov cocktail and it was thrown into the apartment and uh, it was set on fire and they both uh, died and he wrote this beautiful poem and so I borrowed the title from like a verse in, in, in the poem. Absolutely. Talk to us, let's let's peel the series for our um, listeners um, a little bit and help them imagine uh, the work also, you know, uh, although we, we won't give it justice, of course. What is Erin Dubs? It's, it's a series about, uh, you know, a number of characters that you connected with that are part of this queer community in Palestine and, and you sort of interviewed them and photographed them. Take us through what Erin Dubs and maybe talk about the four works that are in the exhibition. So Erin Doves is, in its essence, a documentary, a photo documentary project. But the way 
it's executed is very poetic and I really wanted it to be like visual poetry um, on one hand because I want it to humanize the characters if you like and I wanted to create um, this feeling and this mood that goes you know as if you're reading a poem because you know that is what their life can feel like um, but also it would also work in my favor and theirs because it would allow me, you know, to, to create more room to hide their identities because I didn't want to reveal their identities for their own safety. Um, and so when I started looking for characters, I interviewed a lot of people and it took a while till I decided that I would, would stay with these specific three characters um, because I essentially felt that we both understood this project and its importance, but also there was chemistry between us. And I knew that for that specific bit of poetry in the, in the project, it was essential that they would really allow me into their intimate spaces and just let go and, um, you know, just create with me as I'm there around them. Absolutely. And in the show, we are showing four, uh, photographs of two of the characters that Samar uh, has chosen to accompany her in this project. And the, the, the shots are beautiful. Uh, they are shots of uh, the characters also sort of a bit theatrical, right, Samar? I mean, you've, you know, they're, they're theatrically um, presented and shot. Yeah, it's a mix because sometimes it was, you know, life as it was happening while I was spending time with them. And sometimes it was, I was kind of encouraging them to, 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 you know, to express themselves, you know, um, through whatever means or through whatever, you know, body language they felt that would represent or kind of reenact a certain situation. So, um, for example, um, there's an image where a woman is pulling her t-shirt over her head as she's bending over a couch. Um, yeah, and that was that was during a conversation about body image and violence, the violence she was subjected to from her family members and, and the way she felt about herself and shame. And so things, you know, it took a long time for these images to happen, but those moments when they came and when these moments happened they were magical and they were very powerful and I don't even know how they happened it was such an intense moment that somehow it happened and I just kind of grabbed the camera and shot and this is this is why I decided to remain with these three characters because I knew that chemistry was there and we were able to work together and, and, and they would be comfortable around me and I would be comfortable around them as well they're very very moving uh, shots and I, I am sure that it took time and 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 so much investment on on all of you to sort of build that trust to to enable those those images that um, those photographs that we have in the show. I want to come back to you, Samar, to talk about broader things as well. But let me go back to Iman. Iman, you know, self portrait encapsulates one you know one aspect of your work, right? On on gender. Um, gender rights and body politics and 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 you know women's issues in 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 uh, in the Arab world or in the Middle East or in Khaliji culture etc. But let's talk about your broader practice because you touch upon with other projects on wider issues. Um, you work in on on politics and history and and the instability of our political systems and how that affects communities, etc. And And I also sort of came across your project Succession, which is, you know, about the doc documenting the history of Oman. And, and, you know, that's very different. Talk to us about your wider practice and, and perhaps, you know, that project or any other that you'd like to highlight that would give listeners a, a broader view of the issues that you sort of work on and think about? 
Sure. So um, I integrate my practice as a social critique, uh, observation and investigation of the multi-layered histories of the Gulf, the Arab world, and more recently, East Africa. Um, and so this particular project uh, that you mentioned, Succession, was um, definitely uh, a sort of new direction I took at that time when I had made it. And that was um, because I, number one, I was very jaded with photography. Um, and uh, I was actually commissioned, this work is a commissioned work. Um, and I was asked to exhibit um, any body of work I wanted to about Oman, and they had selected one of my projects. But I felt, um, you know, Oman was kind of going through a very particular time uh, politically. Um, the energy was, you know, very anxious and, and uncertain. And um, I was at that time actually in Oman. I was visiting Oman at that time when I was uh, contacted about this project. And so it didn't really make sense for me to show work that I had already done when my whole kind of connection with Oman was being, you know, I was constantly like thinking about it, questioning it, overall feeling quite uncertain about the future, my future, you know, as, a, as, a, as an Omani citizen. So Naturally, I sort of gravitated towards, um, well, I should, I should also include that um, the images from the book, from my book, Succession, were actually taken from a, from a newsletter, or rather a series of newsletters that were collected by my father. So I had collected all of these publications, not really knowing what to do with them, but I just knew that they were important, historically important, and that um, the images were really captivating and I would be using it for a project at some point. I, I didn't know when or how I would really contextualize it. I just knew that it was material that I was interested in using. And, um, you know, coupled with my um, current feeling about photography at that time and not really wanting to take photographs uh, physically in the sense of me, you know, shooting with my own camera, but I wanted to find a way to reconnect with the medium of photography. The archive was a way for me to do that. So when I was approached to do a project about Oman, I went back to the publications that I had collected and the time in which I was living, you know, um, and what the political situation was in Oman. And that kind of sort of came together organically. Now, the book in itself doesn't necessarily tell a history of Amman because there are plenty of books written about that. Um, that was not my intention. But what I wanted to do was question the role of photography, um, the power of photography in, in creating and then reinforcing a new national Omani identity. And so these publications that I had collected essentially were created by the um, Omani embassy in London to market Oman, you know, to let people know within the diplomatic circle what is going on in terms of development and infrastructure, etc. And, you know, the way that I approached this work, again, was um, not in terms of image selection. It was a very organic way of working, whereby I I re-photographed these images using my iPhone. So I was going through the pages and kind of, I was drawn to certain images and I photographed it with my iPhone because it was important for me to, to be realistic in how I am handling archival documents and maybe how we handle the, these types of documents here, which is not necessarily being precious about it. You know, no white gloves, no, you know, certain lighting. It was just very... Um, the way in which we document our world right now is through our phones. And I wanted, that, I wanted that same approach with this, you know, something that was easy and accessible and uh, allowed me to have a little bit more of a flow as I was engaging with these newsletters. Um, and again, you know, what, I collected hundreds, hundreds, and then I spent a lot of time categorizing them on my, on my computer and then printing them all out 
and then um, thinking about spreads. Because my, uh, my intention for the work was, and the reason why I wanted it to be in a book format be- is because I was interested in um, how you can create new meaning between two different images on a spread. You know, what's the relationship with them? What can I suggest? I think photography is a really, really interesting medium to do that, to manipulate the meaning. I mean, you see that a lot in propaganda, you know, that is uh, a prime example. And I just love to play around with this idea. So a lot of this, the sort of stories, let's say, that I was suggesting uh, within the spreads um, could have come from, again, stories that I would have heard um, about uh, certain people, you know, um, in Oman or it could be, um, you know, something that I had read or something that I created entirely, just really inspired by the images themselves. So again, the approach was very, very playful. And um, I intentionally didn't uh, include any text in the work because I didn't want to um, contextualize it too much. Of course, there is text that, you know, gives you an idea of what the work is about. But I didn't get into the details, sort of highlighting who's who, and what's happening here, um, because the idea is for the viewer to have the freedom to create these stories in their mind. You know, it's, I, you know, I really approached it from a very psychological point of view. Like what can you do when you have two images together? What does that say? You know, it will say something different for me than it will for you. And I really enjoyed that uh, process. You know, I, I wanted to ask um, your, you know, both, both projects, although very different, and and maybe that's something that you've said, you know, grounds your practice. This this alternative narrative, this critiquing of social, political, uh, and wanting to have a different gaze on things. What would you say has been the most impactful or important factor in your life that has prompted this to develop? You talk a lot about you know, your travels and the way, the fact that you were away from Oman for some time that helped you develop this. Uh, what was the, the sort of the trigger for you, you would think, to help you develop this, this work, this, this approach, this angle to your work? So a lot of my work is, is rooted in my, in my personal experiences, having grown up as an Arab woman here in the Khalij and also living abroad. So I draw a lot from, from the personal. Um, and I think because, you know, there's so many things that happen in our lives. We're such, you know, complex human beings, um, extremely multi-layered. Um, there's so many things that um, I want to express. And it takes, it takes shape and form uh, in different ways. Um, the book is an example, um, and the self-portraits is an example, but I think it's all sort of linked with, you know, who I am, where I come from, what I want to um, express, and what I want to unpack as well, you know, as an Arab woman, but also as a human being in this world. Thank you so much, Iman, for sharing that. Um, Samar, uh, I want to turn to you. Your, your, your work is rooted in, in gender rights, women's rights, and we, we spoke about Erin Doves, but let's talk about your broader practice and some of the other projects you've worked on, you, you are perhaps working on. I, I read about um, Hush, which is a project looking at gender-based violence that you had done way back, you know, a number of years ago, which earned you the Sakakini Foundation Award. Tell us a little bit more about your practice and what informs it. Yeah, so Hush was actually the, let's say, starting point or main motivator for my work because I wanted to, again, uh, talk about something that I felt back then wasn't covered enough by the media. And also in our society, um, it was like a taboo. And so there's uh, this shelter where uh, or safe house if you like that women go to but nobody knows what happens inside and you never hear the stories of these women who are inside the only thing i used to hear as a child was like no don't talk about it these women have done horrible things and you know the older i grew the you know <laughs> less satisfied i was with the answers and i decided that i wanted to see what was actually happening inside 
Um, so when I asked for uh, permission to go photograph inside this um, shelter, of course, I was faced with rejection. And so I decided to start volunteering there. Uh, and I started volunteering and working with the women and doing like uh, art workshops for them. And I gained their um, trust, but also the trust of the, of the staff who were working there. And once they started, you know, they knew who I was and my character, um, I was able to get that permission to photograph with, with the women. And that was actually an amazing opportunity for me because I was finally, it proved to me that I was able to, to go into a place that I was rejected from and then to create this platform where I can, where I could, where these women were able to tell their stories, especially in a society like ours where, you know, nobody really knows what happened to them. And so that was kind of the main um, aim of the project. And that was, let's say, the most, like the dearest project to me because uh, it showed me that I, that I, have a set of skills um, that is needed to work in this field and one of them is persuasion and, and trust and, and actually to really care about the stories that you want to cover which you know then creates the dedication to actually really keep going behind you know like following up on things and really really wanting to go somewhere or cover a specific story to get the permit. Absolutely, absolutely, Samar. And those, you know, that was such a powerful and, and moving project as well. You know, how difficult is it to do the work you do in Palestine, right? It is a relatively conservative society layered over, you know, there are the problems and the pressures that people are constantly under. How difficult is it as an artist, as a photographer, as a woman to do the, the work you do? I would say working in Palestine now is becoming more and more difficult for female or female identifying uh, journalists because um, first of all we're less likely to get assignments it's easier to send a man somewhere and not to have to worry about him if he comes back late or if you're sending him into you know a faraway city and and he's on his own you know the risks are less um so that is one issue. So a lot of the time I have to, if I'm sent to a city and, and it's far, I, I sometimes take some friends with me, you know, maybe I, I prefer to go with a male driver so that I'm not on my own, especially if I'm entering houses of people that I don't know and that I'm not sure I feel safe. But then there's the other aspect of the, of the occupation and, and the violence that is committed against us. Um, through uh, the Israeli soldiers, because first of all, they don't like, you know, seeing journalists with cameras. And it can be very scary if you're in a situation and, and a soldier does, isn't in a particularly friendly mood. So you don't know what could happen to you. So you have to always be alert and you always have to, you know, assess this, the, the, the situation. Like, am I safe here? Can I stay? Or should I just move out of, of this place and just, you know, go back as soon as possible. Thank you, Samar. Thank you for your dedication, for your uh, sensitivity and for all the work you do. Um, our time is, is coming to an end, but I have a, a last question for both of you. Um, you know, Iman, let me turn to you first with this sort of closing question. Sort of what narrative or change do you hope your work will impact or influence? And if you had a message to the communities you work on or to, I, to society at large, what would that be? I think my work is a small contribution to a much larger body of work that is being created by Arabs all over who are... Um, you know, sharing their own stories and creating their own stories and just sharing that with the world through their own lens. So I'm just playing a really small part. Um, I think what's, what's amazing is that, you know, a lot of people are doing it, you know, telling their own stories, using their own voice. So 
I think we have also kind of moved on. We've moved beyond sort of breaking down stereotypes, and we're we're really highlighting the the beauty and complexities of what it means to be human. So, I you know I would say that um, I would like to feel like I'm contributing to that at large. Samar, uh, the last words are for you. I think um, what I want to say is that I'm. I hope that my work um, inspires and encourages other people to to really fight for the projects that they want to cover. And and the more we dig into these like deeper projects and the more topics we talk about and and the more diverse the topics that we cover are. Uh, the more we understand ourselves. And, and and I think this is one of the most important things right now in the Arab world is that we can connect through our differences rather than, you know, feel divided uh, over them. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you both. I want to thank you for all the work you do, for your talent, for your sensitivity, for being so brave. Uh, and for the important issues that you bring uh, to light. Thank you so much for having me uh, be a part of this conversation, Lynn. Samar, it was amazing to hear about your work and to connect with you. And just thank you so much for a wonderful half an hour with you all. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Iman, so much. And I also wanted to thank uh, Leila for her work on, on the exhibition and to everyone who actually attended and for everybody's support. For the listeners, if you are in D.C., come see the work. It's beautiful. Um, And now our segment has come to an end. Uh, Good luck to you both, Iman and Samar. It's been an absolute pleasure to be in conversation with you. Thank you both for joining me today. For our listeners, please check our exhibition and the work of our two guests today on our site, www.mei.edu Arts and Culture Center, and follow us on social media Twitter at MEI Arts Culture. This has been a presentation of the Middle East Institute. To support MEI's programs and podcasts, please donate at www.mei.edu. Thank you for your support. Thank you.